Hey, Carl Munson here for the Expats Portugal show. And it's a delight to be talking again once more to Jacqueline Moulin. How are you, Jacqueline? Very well. Thank you, Carl. Thank you for having me on the show. Nice to it's, see you, as always. How are you yourself? Doing? I'm really good. I'm really good. It's a pleasure to see you. And um, we always have a lot of fun when we talk about the uh, the serious matter of mortgages, right? And yeah. um, today we're talking about some of the most commonly asked questions about mortgages when people want to borrow money to buy a property in Portugal. Before we get started, though, have you been anywhere exotic recently? Often when I speak to you, you've been dancing or holidaying somewhere marvellous in the world. <laughs> Sounds like my my life is one funny roller coaster. I was in France not so long okay. ago, and I'm yeah. I'm going to Brazil, my favorite there exotic destination. Yeah, to escape the winter a little bit. So I'll be honest, I'm not I'm not very much. Uh, I'm I was from I'm born from I'm from the Netherlands, so born yeah. there, but I'm not made for cold weather and uh, rainy days. No, I prefer. Oh, okay, and, so some Brazilian yeah. sunshine for you, fantastic. Or right, have a great time and have a lovely time in France. Give my regards to France as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so here you are from uh, Mortgage Direct, and uh, you can see on the screen there under Jacqueline's uh, own personal screen on the big screen, JM at Mortgage Direct SL, if you or dot com, I should say. Let me just do that one more time. JM at Mortgage Direct SL dot com, if you want to get in touch uh, with Jacqueline. Um, before you do that, let's let's let's. Um, before anyone gets in touch with you, I think it's good that we address a few of these questions, commonly asked questions when borrowing money in Portugal, and uh, then they can get in touch with you after a few of these what might be seen as qualifiers. So the first one that I think you get asked quite a lot, Jacqueline, is how much can I borrow? That's quite an important question, really, isn't it? Yes. Uh, if you're a cash buyer, then everything peachy. But yeah. yes, if you need some money from the bank, they are a useful institution to help out there. And um so the basic is if you do not pay taxes in Portugal, and even if you are paying taxes, but your income is from a source outside of Portugal, let's say the US or the UK, then you would be seen by the banks as not resident, even if you're on the visa terms and things like that. It's a different subject from how the, um, how to say the, the authorities look at you and how the banks look at you. Uh -huh. So let's assume for most people, your income is not being earned in Portugal uh, yet. It would be 70%, so 70% loan to value. So on a 200,000 purchase, 140,000 would be available uh, via the bank. That's just the, the criteria, you know, the basic starting point we have to work with. Right. And the second part question to how much can I borrow? You need to talk to me and then we figure out your income outgoings uh, in order to see if how much borrowing is possible for you as the individual applicant. Yes. Okay. And uh, um, there would be some other contexts here as well, weren't there? Age limit often comes into this as well. So what are the other key features, factors that people need to bear in mind as well? Um, income, source of income, outgoings that you already have, and that will continue to stay the way when you buy in Portugal. And how much mortgage, so that becomes a puzzle that we do. We know how to do that puzzle. So we do the calculations on the back. And then we... Um, um, can establish yes or no. And age limit is one important factor that's going to determine how long can a mortgage run for. So this morning I was, for example, analyzing a client um, who is just, you know, end of 60s, entering 70s. So then the term of the mortgage could be five years wow. only okay. because 75 yeah. is really the cutoff point. Yes. Not many banks will do it. Maybe we have someone. So that, that would be like an interesting case to see if we can push it through or not. Um, but imagine if you have a mortgage over five years, the monthly payments go up, of course. Yeah, so of course. the younger you are, the longer the term could be, the longer the term, the lower the monthly payments. And then the equation of how much can I borrow is also positively affected. But that might come as a good news to people. News certainly is a good news for some that you can have a mortgage term over five years, for example. It's it's not common, uh, but right. I think it's the, the, the lowest that banks are willing to offer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else on the um, on the criteria, the background? Um, well, at at first, we we when we when we commence talking, uh, when we start talking to a client, we're not going to ask about any documents. But of course, when we go to the banks, they will ask for documents. So then, basically, they want to see tax returns. This is a criteria for the bank to judge what your income is. So, income you could say needs to be visible in your tax return. That's another criteria. Yeah. Um, sources of income is relevant. So your income is from employment, self-employment, 
uh, if it's pension partially or fully, if you have rental income, these are all considered valid sources of income. So that's not a criteria. What type of income do you earn? Um, and what is the source of your own funds? So where does the your own contribution come to come from? It's another important criteria. Yeah. Um, and age, we just touched already on that. That's another one. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Of mind, yeah, I think these are the main main ones that we look at. Main ones, and of course, you can clarify with uh, Jack in there uh, on the email address. You can see jm at mortgagedirectsl.com. Um, before we move on uh, with some of those commonly asked questions, what's what's it looking like at the moment? Are you getting a lot of demand? Um, is are things slowing down for Christmas, or are they speeding up because people want to get things done before? <laughs> no, traditionally around Christmas, we do see that people their minds start to be another thing. So, okay. I would say that. In between Christmas and New Year's, people start to think, "Ooh, I do like to have a sunny place," or they're confronted with maybe not a bit, bit of adverse weather. Yeah. But you also see that it's um, <clears throat> not just only related to yes, of course, the time of the year definitely can slow down, but what's happening in the financial markets in general. So, dollar is very strong at the moment. Um, a lot of U.S. buyers. That's definitely uh, uh, something we can notice. So it's it's much more about where are people coming from. Mm -hmm. um, it has slowed down a little bit, but not extremely because of <clears throat> some turmoil. But some people think that interest rates are keep will keep increasing, mm -hmm. and for that reason, still want to get a mortgage in place now. So I couldn't say we're not bored by no means at all. <laughs> okay, that's a good way of answering <laughs> it. Okay, so yeah. interest in Portugal uh, continuing, and of course, you cover the whole Iberian Peninsula. We should say as well, at Mortgage Direct. Yeah. We do Spain and Portugal, that's true. Spain yeah. and Portugal. Okay, so talking of turmoil, uh, interest rates rising. What are the interest rates uh, looking like at the moment? And we should say this is a, <laughs> the, the end of November 2020, yeah. before somebody rings rings you up so a things. new video in the future. Okay, let's date stamp that. Uh, that's the first good thing. And the other thing you always mention is this is not financial advice. Uh, yes. I can guarantee a rate. So that that's definitely, it's a given. So I thought I, I'd take a recent example. And as you mentioned, this is November. Uh, about a year ago, I would say what we're offering in November is give or take the same as what it looks like in December and even in two months' time. But right now, yes, markets are moving. However, I think the positive thing, if you compare it to some markets, so let's take the US, for example, interest rates are much higher than they are here. So they're somewhere between close, close to the 6% mark. So we're still talking about in the vicinity of uh, 3.6 and 4.1 is one of the examples mm -hmm. I took up from from recent uh, uh, mortgage advice I gave to clients who represent two offers. And I think it's interesting to break it down a little bit. What is the interest rate made from? So the bank basically in both cases are just is asking like 1%. So that's the bank's spread. What is added to that? So that 3.6 or that uh, 4.1, which we have in total, is something the market is given. So the bank in both cases is only asking for about 1% from both. So these are two banks offers. The What is added is just basically getting the information from the market. So if these swap rates, which is, I, I try not to get too technical, but that is something that banks add to a fixed rate. Yeah. That is the difference between what the bank is earning, if you will, and what the market is asking for money. And they can't, that's just how mortgages just are built. Yeah. Okay. The other one is a variable rate. So the swap rate is connected to a fixed rate mortgage. The other one is a variable rate, which is based on Euribor. Now, both the swap rate and the Euribor have been going up. So even if the banks are not increasing their base spread, this is what the market is offering. So they can't really ignore that. They can just quote whatever they want. Yeah. Um, at the same time, they can't quote anything that will put them. So they can't offer a rate that another bank isn't asking, you know, because they would put themselves really in a, unfavorable position and no one would con contract mortgages. So to break it down with an example of 200,000 loan, this is what we're talking about. The one bank was offering it against 25 years, which make the monthly payment with a 3.6% 1,012. The other bank for fixed rate was asking 4.1, however, against 28 years, which made the payment 1,001 euros. So we have 12 euro less per month but you're paying back more years with a slightly okay. higher interest rate, almost half a percent. Yes. Would you turn it around? We have Euribor. It would be 1% versus Euribor. So whatever Euribor is doing on the last six months, that's usually what the banks average add to it. So to 
summarize. I hope I haven't lost you with all the numbers yet. But no, no. <laughs> I, I know you're very intelligent, but in general, numbers tend to, you know, I don't want to lose anyone else. It can, too, but... it can have people glazing over, I suspect. Yeah, they yeah. go like, uh, numbers, and they drop uh, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th that's one of the reasons I think people like to hire us, because they want they think we understand everything on numbers. I think we do. And yes. then they feel comfortable, you know, putting that in our hands to to explain how it works. Yes. So uh, 200,000 mortgage against 25 years cost you 1,012 a month um, with one bank and 1,000, one euro or two, if you will, uh, for 28 years with the other bank. You could contract the variable one and then it would be 880. So we have a difference of 100-ish, 120 something euros there mm. between a variable and a fixed rate. That's okay. now. The uh, thing that people have to be mindful, of course, with a variable rate, you don't have a, a guarantee it's going to stay that way. So every sure. six months, it will be revised by the bank. Okay. Now, that's not an interesting one. So the story is always about what is the interest rate um, and how much uh, will it be paying, etc. But something that clients don't look at, and I think this is an important one, especially someone coming from you know abroad and coming into Portugal first, uh, banks can slap on a lot of additional products. Okay. The, both the offers that I'm talking about, the only condition is that you have home insurance contracted. So there's no life insurance. There is no what have you, uh, a, a lot of additional products that make in the end your monthly payment go up. Yes. So apart from the interest rate, which I think between the banks is similar ish ish. So it's not hugely different. Of course, there are variations. It's much more in how long can I fix the rate? Uh, can I have a fixed rate to begin with? Can I, um, how long is the term that I can have and what kind of additional products do I need to take out? And I think there comes a difference where we can really, you know, hold clients hand and explain to them different offers of different banks. Well, that's quite that's something cool. though, isn't it? E e even if yeah. it's just house insurance, contents insurance, which, which is what I think you're talking about, you're contracting yeah. for the term of the loan. So it might be for 25 or 28 years to have the home insurance policy with that bank. Not really. You can oh, okay. every every year you can change providers. So you have to have home insurance by law. Yeah. Uh, and every year you have a revision of your home insurance policy oh, according okay. to the market. But um, you are free to move to another provider. The banks don't like it, but you can. So there's no nothing in the contract limiting you to you have to stay with that provider. As long as you have home insurance by law, you have to have it. So. Oh, I see. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, thank you for clarifying that. And I am going to put you on the spot, uh, crystal ball territory. And um, you know, I don't know whether you you just go with what how it is, or if you if you are in any way interested from a sort of a a student of economics and, and global affairs point of view. Um, where where do you think? And again, we fr we're framing this within. This is not financial advice. Um, this is just opinion we're talking about here. But what what? How do you think things are going to go? Um, as far as interest rates go in the next year or two, or would you rather not say? <laughs> this is like um, the, my first answer question. If I knew uh, that yes. means I can predict the future, I'd be a billionaire yes. tomorrow. Yes, That's okay, fair enough. I know I've, I've, <laughs> I've tried this with you before. <laughs> okay, um, we, ha we have people going. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you how clients in general respond to it, and then I'll give you my idea. So okay, there's great. clients who are betting on the fact that they think it's going to uh, slow down at some point again. So yeah. uh, it's correlated to the financial markets in Europe as a whole. So it's not just one financial market. So the European Central Bank, their policies are affecting what the rates are doing. What is the rate at which banks can lend to each other? It's all reflected in, at the end, the end consumer rates being offered for various loan products, right? Yeah. So there's not one thing you can pinpoint, but of course you can look at market trends and you can see what's happening. What I can tell you is that some clients are speculating saying, well, I think it's going to cool down in the next six months, 12 months. So I'll take my chances with the variable rate. Mm -hmm. And you can do that if you have enough, uh, you know, savings to cover up any increases like let's yeah. say the variable rate would increase so the eurobor would go up the bank spread is not going to change but eurobor could um that is going to affect the effective rate you're going to get from the bank yeah. in the end and you know there's not one part there you cannot go and negotiate with the bank i want a different eurobor you cannot yeah. it's just what they're give, going to give you based on what the market is doing so if you have enough reserves and you feel comfortable you know knowing that there is some uncertainty you can do that if you don't want any kind of insecurity, then I wouldn't advise you to go with that kind of rate. Mm. 
if you have the option to choose from fixed rates, which not all banks are offering you that, but we still have banks that are offering um, fixed rates for, especially this is interesting if you're not earning in euros. So it's always easier to get fixed rates for someone who's earning in euros, especially in Spain. This is even more true than it is in Portugal, but you have to know which bank to go to. I think that's, yeah. um, it's, it's not as flexible for uh, non-residents to get a fixed rate just with any bank. That's one. Okay. So you need to understand um, your own finances. Can I, uh, you know, cushion any fluctuation going upwards? Mm -hmm. So that we have, and we have clients who say, no, I don't want any, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night thinking about my, my mortgage rates. I just so want to know where I, I just want peace of mind. Exactly. Let yeah. me, let me sleep at night. And I just want that fixed rate for as long as I can have it. Um, an important follow-up question to that is, I always ask clients, like, if you have the intention to pay off the mortgage early, something to think about too, because there's penalties for early redemption yes. and they're higher with a fixed rate versus with a variable rate. So if you have a fixed rate, your redemption penalty usually is 2%. And if you have a variable rate, your redemption penalty is usually half a percent of the amount paid back. So that can make a difference. So if, if you're very certain you're gonna, you know, cash out on something or you're going to get inheritance well you never know and you can't really predict but let's say you have some kind of security that you're going to um, get a sum of money and you want to pay off the mortgage before it actually matures then that's something to think about and perhaps save a little bit on the monthly payments and i advise clients if you do that put that you know in a jar and keep that for any rainy day that the okay. mortgage would go the the year bar would go up if you take a variable rate mortgage but not literally um you mean a metaphorical yes, a, metaphor a metaphorical jar rather than a yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, yes, we were edging towards your your view on this. Now I understand yeah. you don't want to. You, I think you have you have a, an answer if you know that, that is not uh, putting it's, you. On. It's a bit of a, what what some clients are responding, so that maybe people feel comfortable too. Like what is everyone else doing? Yeah, I think majority yeah. of people still opted for fixed rates, and I can say so that even in, uh, in the past seven years, I've been doing this now for seven years, we've had seven years of negative interest rates, yeah. which is technically shouldn't be possible. So that's something curious to think about. Right. Um, it, it shouldn't be possible, but it was, we had that. We had a minus half a percent of Euribor. So anyone taking an interest rate, that's say one and a half percent is what the bank offered, you would be paying 1% effectively, and even less if the bank offered you less. Um, so looking in the past, that's what we had. We had a very stable reality from that point of view. And a lot of people were also noticing if you kept savings in the bank, you didn't get a lot of interest on that. So, yeah. or even negative or nothing. So that's what we had. So looking back, uh, I was more comfortable advising people. If you can take a variable rate and you have some cushion, the likeliness of this going up on the short term doesn't look as likely yeah right now it's been Eurobor is at 2.8 percent when i checked it yesterday uh, last uh last evening and that's the highest since um well maybe it's been higher at some point but it's been hovering about two and a half percent and around that curve so somewhere between two and a half and three where it was minus a half percent seven uh, months ago yes so it's definitely different um in general, we expect it to stay around this 2.5-ish to 3% curve for the next coming months. Okay. Much longer in the future than that, it's difficult to predict because so many things can happen that can affect this rate being offered, which is beyond scope that anyone can predict. So there's definitely people who make this into a daily job and they do that for a living. Yes. And they might have some parameters, but you still have so many... Um, insecurities feeding into that rate being offered that we can't well, fully grasp no one i think no one can fair enough okay so no. if it, i'll say it rather than you i mean it, you could you, one could think that perhaps the best days are behind us with those seven years of negative interest rates and some turbulent times ahead and make of that what you will when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, the interest rates and what's likely to happen in the future. Thank you. So we've looked at interest rates. We've looked at criteria. We've looked at how much uh, people can borrow. 
uh, percentage wise another commonly asked question i understand it is can i have the mortgage approved before finding the property um and so some people might like that kind of peace of mind coming to portugal being able to shop and thinking well i've got uh, you know 200 400 600 available to me is that possible yes yeah, so i just want to add to the last the thing we were talking about interest rates okay um so I would say if I talk to clients and people are upset with the fact that interest rates are increasing, I think yeah. we've we come from a reality where we had unrealistically low interest rates. That yeah. was just not realistic. And then, of course, adjusting to something which is more expensive and higher is never appreciated. But we've had interest rates. I'm talking way back, like before I was born. Um, 70s, well, I was born in the 80s. So 70s, 80s, where interest rates were around 15%. We're not yeah. looking at that either. And there's yeah. countries where you actually have these interest rates. So that volatility we're not seeing either. So I think we're looking at rates which are a bit more uh, realistic. It's not as good as we had it, for sure. I'm not going yeah. to deny that. But it's still not as bad as it could be. And we still have a better reality in Portugal as we have, as I mentioned at the start, in the U US, for example, or okay. in the UK. Um, <laughs> leaving that was, question. No, thank you thank you for that uh, overview appreciate that because i was putting you on the spot with that yeah um having mortgages approved before finding the property can you come with an offer in hand uh yes so you cannot go to the final stages of mortgage approval you always need a property to to get there yeah, that, so that's what they call a fine that's a final offer letter from the bank in portugal uh, you cannot move to that stage unless you have a property what we do and i think that's where we come in also in hand, like before clients actually um, come over to Portugal, we are going to an analyze their finances. So we can give a first indication, telling the client yes or no, you could approve, be approved for amount X, yes or not, this is possible, or we think the this would be the option or there's no option. So that's one. So that gives already a lot of clarity, yes or no, would there be a chance? To really get a uh, request from a bank, we would have to take it to the bank, take in, um, and to consider it, you need to present your documents or your tax returns, your bank statements, credit reports, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can get a first assessment from the bank. So that's not the same as a final mortgage approval. But yes, you can get a, a really good indication if the bank is willing to lend to you or not. And I think that's the much more peace of mind than having no understanding if that's possible. Sure. And we notice that people sometimes present realities that are used to from their own home reality and expect that the bank's kind of analysis will work the same here. So let's say in your own home country, you could get a loan of 200,000. They expect to get the same in Portugal, which is not the case. So that's something uh, we, we try to explain to people what are the criteria that banks are looking at when you apply for a mortgage here. And would you qualify yes or no based on some basic information? So if anyone gets really enthusiastic uh, during the seeing this this video and want to Ask, explain their situation. I'll send you a form. I think we mentioned that also a couple of times. I'll send you a link to a form and then we can give you that first feedback pretty quick. Perfect. And in the first instance, to reach out to you, jm at mortgagedirectsl.com. Uh, and I believe you can also make the request via the website, but why not reach out directly to Jacqueline, jm at mortgagedirectsl.com. Yes. Is there anything I forgot to ask you that we need to include here, Jacqueline, while we're talking about commonly asked questions, misperceptions, uh, FAQs, basically around uh, borrowing money to buy a property in Portugal? From the top of my mind, I'm always not so good with, but I think we covered the main things. Covered like, most uh, things, of course, people yeah, can get like what kind you. Yeah. All right. Or even go to the forum at expatsportugal.com forward slash community where you can ask questions on all aspects of moving to Portugal and uh, get uh, a, a favorable and informative response from the expats Portugal community. Have a great time in France and Brazil, Jacqueline, won't you? And uh, <laughs> we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us today. No, thank you so much, Carl, for having me. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. It's a funny uh, Tuesday uh, kickoff of my day. So thanks uh, for, uh, for having me. I really appreciate it. Pleasure. All right. Bye for now. Again. And if I don't see you, I don't know. It's the 29th of November. I'm sorry to wish you a happy Christmas at this early time of the year, but <laughs> just in case I don't see you. Bye for we now. We already have the Christmas bar, uh, get together with the team too this week. So, <laughs> really? Okay. All right. I'm in line with your festivities then. Fantastic. Okay. Bye for you now. Are fully. <laughs> All right. Catch up. Thanks so much, Cole. You too. Have a lovely Christmas. Bye. Bye.